All I know, all I know, love will save the day. Got to be bold, got to be bad, got to be wise. Sometimes you're sad, got to be hard, not too, too hard. I know that love will save the day. You gotta be bad, you gotta be bold, you gotta be wiser. You gotta be hard, you gotta be tough, you gotta be stronger. You gotta be cool, you gotta be calm, you gotta stay together. All I know, all I know, love will save the day. Oh, the mic is on and everything. I've never had the Madonna mic before. I'm very <laughs> excited. Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm Marilyn Connolly. Uh, if you don't know, I've been here a while. Uh, I um, went through um, Youth of Unity in high school with this church, and um, now I'm a board member. Um, I am a women and gender studies major at UT, um, and s as Charles always puts in our um, newsletter, if you see that, I use that to inform my talks. Whew. So, <laughs> today um, we'll be talking about toxic positivity, um, and as my mother so astutely um, said, uh, it's a big talk, and <laughs> um, I didn't do a very good job like promoting it or talking to people about it um, because I was I was really scared. It seemed really intense, and I was like, well, maybe I'll back out. Maybe I'll just talk about affirmations and denials. Like I don't know, um, but I think it's important for us to talk about, um, and I'm excited to go on this little journey with y'all. Um, it might get a little bit tense, um, but then everything is going to like come together and be really nice at the end. Um, so yeah, deep breaths. <sighs> um, and you know, this being such a big talk, I really am just like scratching the surface. I'm probably going to keep talking about this for like at least a decade, I think. So um, there will be some open questions, I think, at the end of it that will be fun for us to talk through together. Um, so how this all came about, um, I was on the Youth of Unity um, alumni Facebook group. Um, and if you don't know, Youth of Unity is the um, program for high schoolers at Unity, and it's like so powerful and so amazing, and like all these teens get amazing positive experiences out of this dark time to be a person um, and find a lot of love. Um, and so I was on the Facebook group, and a former uh, YOUer um, posted this tweet uh, that just sparked this like huge conversation. And here is the tweet. Um, <clears throat> Positivity culture is so trite and immature to me. I like to be around people who recognize nuanced emotions, reality, and structural issues. Also, many positivity-only people are benevolent on the surface, but bigoted victim blamers beneath. Victim blaming is at the root of positivity only, American exceptionalism, meritocracy, bootstrap theory, prosperity gospel, and the secret. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the person who posted it said, you know, <clears throat> Unity teaches the secret. Uh, what do you guys think about this? Um, so, obviously, there are a lot of things I don't agree with about this tweet. Um, and a lot of things we're not going to go into. I don't think it's necessarily appropriate to talk about bootstrap theory during church, um, but we can talk about it after if you want to. Um, and it's obviously like coming from a place of like deep hurt and um, you know pain that someone has experienced from like someone in this um, 
you know, new thought place that we're all living in. Um, and there are a lot of things that we can say that, you know, well, she's got that just a little bit wrong, and like we would explain it differently, um, and plenty of people did. Um, but for me, when I read it, it really put some words to some issues that I've had, um, like studying intersectional feminism in college and, you know, believing so intensely in the unity principles. A lot of it, times there can be kind of, seem to be kind of a conflict between the two. Um, and so, like, you know, like I deeply believe in the power of positive thinking, but sometimes it's really uh, hard and annoying when you have like a straight white man telling you that all of the structural issues in the world are just in your mind and like you're creating them, um, uh, stuff like that. Um, and so like that was the tweet and it was really intense, but what interested me the most was um, the conversation that it started. Um, and it kind of took like a left turn and got into a lot of other things um, that I think are important to talk about. Um, and it was this conversation by all of these people who were raised in unity, but like the majority of them are not um, coming to church anymore. Um, and so like that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I did what every young person is taught never to do. I went to the comment section <laughs> and I read through all of the comments. Um, and so today I'll be quoting a lot of them and I'll be um, talking about kind of the gist of all of them. Um, and so let's get started. Um, Um, I just have a note that says, however overwhelming this message is, this is why people left. <laughs> so um, here is, here are a couple of ones that stuck out to me. Um, <clears throat> this aspect of unity teaching is more or less why I left the church and all other churches that teach it. I found it leads to, I have these good things because I deserve them, that person does not have them, health, wealth, a home, social privileges. Therefore, they must not deserve them. I've seen victims of childhood trauma and chronic illness, instead of receiving compassion, be told they brought it upon themselves by their negative energy. I've seen suicidal people resist getting help because needing medicine for an imbalance is a sign of negative thinking, with deadly results. I do believe that's the first step to a more positive path is to visualize it, but I also believe that stuff happens and it can happen to everyone and it's nobody's fault. I started to move away from unity teachings when an adult I trusted, in response to me sharing a story about a classmate being attacked in my neighborhood, said, I wonder what kind of energy, energy she's putting out to attract that. That definitely extends to some social and structural inequalities, too. Now, I don't know about you, um, but listing all that stuff out out loud is horrifying. Um, and instinctively, I became very defensive when I was reading all this. I thought, you know, that's never the message I received. Like, how could these people I know to be so positive and loving be saying that stuff to people? Um, and, you know, like, that, that can't actually happen, but then it did. <laughs> I was, um, I have, like, a huge honor to um, intern at Unity Church of the Hills, um, which is a, our bigger sister church up north, and um, I brought this question to them because uh, it was really stumping me. I... Um, I am a part of this um, book study they have on Fridays, and it's full of these like 
really amazing, um, powerful spiritual thinkers, and I want to make it clear that I really do value them. Um, but I brought them this question, how do we talk about energy and manifestation with people who experience trauma? Um, and four out of five of them had a similar response. Yeah, to like, you know, that's the energy they're putting out there and they need to focus on that and it's them. Um, and <laughs> I really felt like <laughs> disheartened and then finally uh, Reverend Kristen Grandin, who is um, one of the ministers up there, um, said something to the effect of, you know, you have to be careful about which messages you bring to people and I wouldn't bring this doctrine to someone who is in the midst of trauma and like going through abuse and everything. Um, and uh, that that's something that they have to investigate for themselves. Um, and it reflected another comment I read in the comment section, um, which was, I recognize that it's difficult to effectively teach a principle to all levels of spiritual development, to people go going through something heavy and people who are not. Um, and it kind of, it reminded me of an experience I had uh, going to visit um, the Baptist church uh, with my aunt. Um, there was a, um, our little nephew, um, Corbin, who we're pretty convinced is um, actually an angel. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, we were uh, talking to the pastor after church and um, you know, here's this precious light, and um, the pastor was talking about what a sinner he was and how it was a good thing that he was coming to church because he knew he was a sinner. Um, and so that's kind of <laughs> the feeling I got out of that experience. Um, so I started thinking back about um, my experiences growing up in unity and how it made me feel. Um, so you know, I think we all think about it every once in a while, but growing up in unity was such a blessing to me. I really do believe that I am who I am today um, because of unity and because of all the principles. Um, but there were some things uh, that maybe I was too young to um, understand the nuances of um, when I learned them that I kind of had to go back and unlearn um, I had a really poor relationship with, um, negativity, uh, which, like, no one should have, like, a good relationship with negativity, <laughs> but, um, uh, for a really long time, I had, like, so much trouble dealing with negative emotions, and that wasn't, you know, there was some trauma there, too. It wasn't just unity, but, um, knowing that I was supposed to, like, focus on positivity turned really quickly to, you know, thinking that I should only ever be feeling joy and love all the time, and I should feel really guilty when I felt anything like anger or sadness. Um, and uh, so I pushed a lot of things down and, like, let a lot of things fester and, like, not let out because I thought that you know, that's negativity. I don't even want to think about that. Like, I'm not going to do anything about it. Um, and it was really unhealthy. Uh, and so I, therapy helped a lot. I would recommend therapy if you haven't tried it um, <laughs> to help me kind of unlearn those things. And I think also with, you know, maturity, um, I've been able to, like, look back at some of these principles and kind of um, rework them um, and think about them in a new way for me that's more healthy. Um, so, you know, all of that just to say that it's not just people who've left. Like, um, this is something we need to think more about, like, how we're talking to our young people, um, I think. Uh, so, that's all that. Now we get to talk about the good stuff. <laughs> what do we do about all of this? Um, so, 
when I was reading the tweet and reading through all the comments, I had a whole section of like what people, how people should have treated that woman instead, like what is the right thing, because obviously if I was in that situation and she had been talking to me, like I would have known exactly the right thing to say and then everyone would believe the right thing because it was what I believe. Um, and so I got rid of all of that because that's not really what it's about. Um, this is about people feeling let down by this community and people leaving because they don't feel supported. Um, so I think the most important thing we can talk about is how to take care of our community and like really hear and support the people in it. Um, my friend Elliot has taught me that if you want to create radical change and a shift in consciousness on a wide scale, you have to start by focusing on the community that you're building. Um, so, how do we shift our consciousness? Um, what's the best way for us to treat our community and how do we protect our people? Um, so let's start with Jesus. Jesus said, judge not that you be judged. That's pretty much it. Like <laughs> We can go home. Um, but uh, everyone's intentions, especially in a positive spiritual community, um, are to be kind and show love to people. Um, but when we stop listening to people, um, what we intend as love can be hurtful. Um, you know, judging is not like just about, you know, judging someone's decisions or um, thinking someone's wrong. I think it's, in this case, it's also like thinking that you can discern why something is happening to someone or what's the best outcome, what's the best thing for them to do. Um, you know, that's that little voice in our head, the ego, that's trying to explain things and trying every, to fit everything in boxes and patterns that it can explain. Um, but we know that God has everything in divine order and that we don't need to be worrying about the minutia because we can't even begin to understand um, everything that needs to happen. Um, so this also reminded me of, when I was thinking about this part, I thought of um, a talk that Reverend Jill Carey, who's the minister at Unity of Wimberley now, but she came and talked back when we were at the American Legion Hall. I don't know why I still remember this, but um, she was talking about when you pray for people, um, just think of them in, you know, the highest, most divine light. You don't need to pray for what you think they need, because um, who knows? They don't even know what they need, so you can just think, hmm, Teresa, like, love, and that's it, hmm, Jim. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's focus on divine order and not just positivity only. And let's see what the law of attraction is for what it is, which is just a piece of the whole thing, the whole understanding, and um, a tool. We don't have to use it to explain everything, but I think one of the like, most amazing things about being in unity and being in new thought is that we have this tool that we can use to get the things that we want in our life. Um, Emily Cady says, um, there is always less resistance by the mortal when it is gently led into the truth than when its errors are directly and vigorously combated. Say that again. <coughs> <laughs> there is always less resistance by the mortal when it is gently led into the truth than when its errors are directly and vigorously combated. People are going to get the lesson, whether you tell them or not. People, you know, during lessons in church, people hear things all the time that the minister has never said. You open a book you've read a thousand times, and there's a page in there you've never read before that somehow has exactly what you needed to hear. Um, 
you don't have to worry about getting the message to people. You just, we just need to worry about, I mean, worry, but um, <laughs> we just need to focus our attentions on um, love and how divinely whole each and every one of us is. We get the privilege um, of knowing how divinely whole and perfect each and every one of us is. We're created in the image and the likeness of God, and we don't, <coughs> we aren't weighed down by the same ideas of, you know, sin and guilt. Um, we get to come into this world happy, knowing that we are whole and perfect, and that um, everyone else in our community and out in the world is whole and perfect too. Um, <clears throat> so, and obviously, let's focus on listening to people when they're coming to us with their trauma, with their hurt, with their pain. Um, you know, uh, there's that old saying, it's like, listen twice, you've got two ears and one mouth because you should be listening twice as much as you should be talking, um, you know. Um, and when I was thinking about this part, um, I kind of focused in on um, what helped me when I was going through my like rough patch, because I did, and I was still here, <laughs> like I'm still here now. Um, and it was, it really was knowing that I would be able to come to this church um, because it was really important to me to be able to come to this church on Sunday and feel seen and feel loved by people, um, which I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere else. Um, and knowing that if I had some sort of hurt, I could talk to people about it, I could talk to my parents about it, and they would hear me and help me find the help that I needed. Um, so, yeah. Um, this, hmm. So we're shifting our focus to wholeness and perfection. We're being okay with, um, you know, feelings that arise because we're all humans and it all happens and it all comes and goes and we know that, I mean, I'm sure each every one of you had ideas about what you knew the truth to be when I read that tweet at the beginning. Um, so, you know, whatever affirmations and denials you need to do to bring out the best in your life. Um, but, you know, we could, I guess the main takeaway is that we could, we know that we could be practicing all of these principles on our own. A lot of people do. They learn this. They learn, oh, like, I don't have to go to church. I just won't. Um, and that's fine, and that's wonderful, but we're all here because we're searching for community, and we're looking for um, guidance in a greater group awareness um, and a greater consciousness. And, you know, we can even feel that moving to Casa de Luz, where, like, the consciousness is so much higher, and um, we're just so lucky to be able to, like, feel that, um, that, you know, um, we need to be focusing just as much on our community as we are on our own personal work. Um, so let's shift our focus to how divinely whole and perfect we are. Um, and Myrtle Fillmore, I will leave you with this quote. Uh, Myrtle Fillmore said, forgive yourself and rejoice in God's love, saving power. God blesses you, and we bless you. Okay. Thank you. All right, that's all. <laughs> what? Oh, do y'all have questions? Okay, you comment. Of course. So, uh, you know, when we pay, you've heard of her. So she really thought that there was a belief that that you held that caused every disease. 
Okay? And she said, that is not helpful when someone is, you know, sick, to say to them, oh, you have some belief that has caused this. Even Louise Hay, you know, who sincerely believed that, saw, you know, how, how uh, terrible that was to do to people. And, you know, compassion is always the first thing to do. And, and the other thing is I really believe that everybody has a choice. No matter what, I think that the, the positive thinking part of it is there's a choice in there. And there's always a choice. No matter what you're going through, there's always a choice. It may be the choice to, uh, you know, check out when you're being abused. I mean, that may be the choice. But there's always a way that it can turn. And that person that's in that situation, if they bring that trauma to you, the best thing you can do is to just accept them and bring them in. And then if you get a message, you know, that this is this is something you can do, you might mention that. I, I had a, just this last week, I was calling people um, to see if they wanted to come to the Lizzie show. And I talked to two different people who were going through huge things where they really needed to talk. And I sent one lady, one lady had found out that her, her uh, beautiful boy uh, had schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like the first time she said it out loud and she burst into tears. So I gave her the number of uh, silent nudity and I said, you can talk to me about this any time, but if you wake up in the middle of the night freaked out, you can call these people. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll call them down. And then the other one was, uh, her parents were in two different hospitals in Houston. And one, her mother's dying and she's denying it. Everybody's denying it. And so I just talked to her a little bit about, you know, my experience with my own mother's death. And it just like took the edge off of it for her. So just being compassionate, oh my God, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. You know, you don't have to solve it. But as you listen and, and listen with compassion and love, you may have an idea that might help them. But then also don't, you know, don't have any investment in whether they do it. Because it's totally up to them. So anyone else? Janet? Well, I think it's important to remember, you know, we're talking about these unconscious beliefs mm -hmm. that, um, that may cause things in our lives. But it's important to remember Unconscious means unconscious. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so it's it's ridiculous to blame somebody for having a belief they don't know about. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Um, well, I, I was uh, this idea that we meet here is important, and, and that that's important. We're we're all connected now digitally, mm -hmm. but we which makes this more uh, rare and uh, precious. Yeah. There's something about what we share right here in this room that, uh, that is, is important, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. so I'm just uh, going to reflect back and ask some questions. So okay. we talked about energy and manifestation. We're talking about making these vision boards and stuff like that. And you hear that if you think about Cognitive behavioral therapy is you're thinking about an outcome, you're visualizing it occurring, you're creating neural pathways so it's easier for that to occur. Mm -hmm. And then this concept of this unconscious manifestation of darkness or illness, mm -hmm. there's something on the inside of someone and it's manifesting things that are creating dark energy or dark matter in their world. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I'm hearing is that, that both of these may be true yeah. and that with not to blame someone if they're manifesting dark energy, but at the same time, I mean, there's genetics, there's environmental yeah. factors, yeah. there's yeah. financial factors, I mean, all types right. of factors. <laughs> so, and then, so I feel like I'm understanding that more, just as I reflect back. Mm -hmm. 
but I also this power of positive thinking versus like divine order. Mm -hmm. like, it has to be this way, it has to be this way, it has to be this way. like over positive thinking, over manifestation versus there's no surrender because it's just all about our minds versus like the God has this, we're into God's order of things and so we surrender to that. Is that what yeah. I'm yeah. yeah. So there's a trump to the visualizations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a trump to the manifestation and that's believing in divine divinity, word, divinity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, right in the back there. Hi. Hi. Um, and, I, and I think it's, um, and this is something that I have, for years, have kind of has come to me, is that it is my ego that wants everything to be a certain way. Right. right. And that really our conscious mind is like, what, 3%. So all the affirmations and denials, or we'll work on that 3% that manifests, but it's that unconscious, it's that shadow from really good lifetimes, what will happen when you're in the womb, mm -hmm. all these things that, so when when that charge comes up, it's like a gift. Yes. That negative thing comes up, like, oh, look at this gift. I can see that I have a reaction to this person. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And that it's it's like a computer program. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're like, you know, whatever 12.0 iPhone, and someone, because of the trauma they've been through, is that I have a 2.0. You know, there's going to be some, if you try and go at that level, they will not understand it and go, right. you, know, you know, dissonance. Yeah. Yeah. It's not coming. Definitely. And that something came up for me, too, around that, which, you know, we're on this level where um, it's like, it's like trying to help a kid with their math homework. Like, you, it's, I'm sure y'all are all very patient and kind to children but it's easy to feel exasperated when you think you like know the truth and you just want to like give it to them but they're not quite there yet yeah definitely yeah. and then it being and that's where at least in my own experience where the whole listening like mm -hmm. the, yeah. the art of listening yeah is that when my mind's going wants to teach them something because i know something more than they do mm -hmm. i am not i'm in low consciousness yeah. Even though it seems like I'm in this place, but it's only when I, my mind can become quiet mm -hmm. and I can be in my heart and I can feel the presence or the golden key, I feel the presence mm -hmm. and I can listen and then something shifts. All right, we've got time for two more. You, yeah. So, I have a background in human genetics okay. and undergrad biology mm -hmm. and I've always struggled with how much of this is nature and how much is nurture. Mm -hmm. I agree with what you said, there's a certain component that's genetic, as much as we want to say that positive thinking is going to completely change that, there's a limit to how far that can go, especially with certain diseases. Certain diseases have mm -hmm. full penetrance and full expression, and how that manifests in certain cases can't completely control. Now, there may be other genes downstream that through epigenetics you can change the expression of those. There are certain ones that are going to express at some point and you're not going to be able to stop that. And that's the disease will manifest. But who's to say that there isn't something positive in everything? Mm -hmm. And that we shouldn't be trying that we should be trying to necessarily change those things. My mother and I share a very rare uh, disease that will manifest and it's just a matter of time. But mm -hmm. there's also a gift in everything, right? Because through our own pain and suffering we can use that to help other people and we're more able to relate to them and that's the whole point of living right is to foster these relationships and to help other people through their suffering and to help broken people feel less broken mm -hmm. so i think that it's important to recognize that we shouldn't necessarily be trying to change all these things and say oh through our mind we're going to change everything no we have to use the negativity and find the gifts in those and change the way we look at that yeah. in order to help our community that's the important distinction is that you're finding the you know the good in that the positivity in that and no one else is telling you oh well this you having this genetic thing is a great opportunity for you you know um, yeah that's really special do you want to bring us home Teresa <laughs> well after you said that um, about illnesses and stuff just after being through cancer twice and surviving and being here which I'm very happy for um, 
there was a part of me at one time said, what did I do to bring this on to myself, right? And what I realized is those, those things, those cells were in my body. It was my stress and my lack of looking at that and dealing with it that put a stress on my immune system. So it wasn't anything that I caused. It, it was an expression that was there that I just, that there was an environment that allowed it to express and that, you know, I could have chosen to do differently. But the one thing is that this last few weeks, I have been, actually it's been going on for a long time, several weeks, um, I've been in a really dark, sad, despair. And sometimes we just got to be in it. Mm -hmm. And I was resisting being in it because I don't want to feel that. I wanted to be positive. And sometimes that's what God needs us to do. Because that's where we get our growth, because we look inside and say, okay, what's this despair about? Mm -hmm. yeah. And just in the last two days, I've had this shift. And I'm realizing that I needed to go there so that I could see that there was another way. Yeah. And there was another way. Mm -hmm. And we have a range of human emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And to put any of those down or suppress them is not healthy for us, right? It's about feeling what we feel and then seeing what we are, which is whole perfect. Thank you. 